In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Good morning, everybody. Seems very full, but you seem very quiet this morning. Perhaps that's just hangovers after watching the England match. Or, but it's lovely to see you all, uh, more people uh, trickling back every week. Our Mass this morning is uh, offered for Margaret and Williams and Jean and Arthur. So we keep them especially in our prayers. Let's begin, as we always do, by centering ourselves in the mercy of our loving God and calling to mind our sins as we ask for forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Son of man, I am sending you to the Israelites, to the rebels who have turned against me. Till now, they and their ancestors have been in a revolt against me. The sons are defiant and obstinate. I am sending you to them to say, The Lord says this, whether they listen or not, this set of rebels shall know there is a prophet amongst them. This is the word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm. The response is, our eyes are on the Lord till he shows us his mercy. Our eyes are on the Lord. To you I have lifted up my eyes. You are dwell in the heavens. My eyes like the eyes of slaves on the hands of their lords. Like the eyes of a servant on the hand of his mistress, so our eyes are on the Lord our God, till he shows us his mercy. Amen. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. We are filled with contempt. Indeed, all too full is our soul with the scorn of the rich, with the proud man's disdain. Amen. Reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. In view of the extraordinary nature of these revelations, to stop me from getting too proud, <clears throat> I was given a thorn in the flesh, an angel of Satan to beat me, and stop me from getting too proud. About this thing, I have pleaded with the Lord three times for it to leave me, but he has said, My grace is enough for you, 
how it is at its best in weakness. So I shall be very happy to make my weaknesses my special boast, so that the power of Christ may stay over me. And that is why I am quite content with my weaknesses, and with insults, hardships, persecutions, and the agonies I go through for Christ's sake. For it is when I am weak that I am strong. The word of the Lord. Chipping away at everything we try and do. 
It's easier to become negative about people and the things that we're familiar with that are closest to us. And that seems to be exactly what's happening in the Gospel today. Jesus visits his hometown. Now we must remember that for months and months before today's Gospel, Jesus has been travelling around all of Galilee. And he's been doing so with huge crowds coming to see him, get a glimpse of him, see him work his power, listen to his words of encouragement and equality, fairness and love. And word is spread far and wide about him. But when he comes to his hometown, the people who perhaps knew him best, the people that had seen him grow up, they just can't accept him. And all that he receives is criticism about his background. They look down on him, son of Mary. Joseph was just a carpenter, nothing special about you at all. And criticism about his mission. This lack of belief so unsettles him that he can do no power work no power the negativity of the people of Nazareth was an obstacle to God's grace negativity is always an obstacle to God's grace it must have been difficult for Jesus people question his credentials and his mission and as we heard the evangelist Mark clearly tells us that Jesus was not able to perform any deed of power there. He was amazed at their lack of faith. Jesus could not work a miracle in his own life. How is that possible? Jesus is the divine Son of God. Does not God have the power to do everything? God is almighty. But God chooses to exercise his power in deference to the creatures that he has created. And God has made us with free will. We have the power to accept what is good or to reject it. To receive what is offered or to ignore it. God will not force anyone to believe. God will abide by the choices that you and I make. The choice to build others up with positivity and hope, or the choice to knock others down with negativity and despair. If Jesus was unable to work a miracle in Nazareth, we shouldn't be surprised at times when we will be unable to obtain the good that we desire. We may, for example, deeply wish that a child, a grandchild, or a friend develops a belief in God. Yet despite our prayers and encouragement, that person remains blissfully immune to God's presence and love. We may strive to reconcile with someone who has hurt us, or that we have hurt in the past. But in spite of many attempts and suggestions, that person shows no openness to healing. We might passionately wish to build a better world, to raise awareness of the threat to our environment, the needs of the poor, especially in our area, or the injustices of our economic or political system, as all Christians should want to. But those we address turn the other way and focus on their own goals and their own priorities. They freely choose not to listen. And we, like Jesus of Nazareth, are rendered powerless before them. And in those moments, we can become negative and frustrated. It was in that powerlessness of today's Gospel that calls us to persistent hope. When Jesus was rejected by the local people that he had known, he didn't go in a soul. He didn't cancel his ministry. 
nor did he become negative and inward looking. Absolutely not. He continued to preach the gospel to all who would listen. He continued to live his life by what we now know as gospel values. He lived his life with a profound respect for the dignity of every human being. A profound respect for nature and the environment. And a great love for all peoples. Even those who rejected him in today's gospel. Even those who nailed him to the cross. He showed his mercy and his love. So we too, like Jesus, must persist in our efforts to do good, to be good, to be the best version of ourselves. Like Jesus, we must persist with a positive attitude to encourage faith, forgiveness and justice in all our relationships, in our schools, in our homes, in our workplaces our families. We should persist in positivity and hope because the same freedom that allows others to say no today may allow them to say yes tomorrow. Moreover, we believe that God is at work in our world today, that God's grace and power abounds, and God's grace has the power to influence and change human hearts. So we persist in hope, believing that a time will come when others will freely choose faith, freely choose forgiveness, and freely choose with passion to do what is good and just and right. And when they do, we'll be able to encourage them forward and join with them in building the kingdom of God here. So together, let us be a positive community positive community that is always persistent in hope. With positivity and hope, let us stand and profess what we believe, the Apostles. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to heaven. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. So with positive hearts of faith, let us turn to the Lord with our bidding friends. For Francis our Pope, Robert our Bishop and all church leaders, that they may continue to be witnesses to the love of Christ for all people. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all who are struggling with faith or are persecuted for their faith, that God's grace will strengthen them and give them renewed hope. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For those who suffer bullying or intimidation, that Christ, who is the little by his own people, may grant them resilience of mind and peace of heart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our own parish community, that we may challenge the cynical and sceptical, challenge the cynical and the sceptical, and give a prophetic witness to our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the neglected, the housebound, the sick, and those who are terminally ill, that they will know the Lord's comfort and support. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who have died, that Christ may welcome them into his kingdom, where insult, hardship, and persecution are no more, and grace is brought to perfection. 
Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And we unite these prayers with those of our Blessed Mother. We pray together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, at the hour of our death. In a moment of silence, let's bring our own private petitions before the Lord. We remember our loved ones who have died at this Mass as well. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Lord our God, we ask you to hear and receive all of our prayers through Christ our Lord. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacrifice dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and by the power of the Holy Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself. That a people formed as one by unity of the Trinity made the body of Christ in the temple of the Holy Spirit might to the praise of your wisdom be manifest as the church. And so, in company with the angels in heaven, we praise you as we proclaim together, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. In giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect. <coughs> Excuse me. Especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all of the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, Lord, and be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all of the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned here before you this morning. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all of your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our lives, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away all the sins of the world. Blessed are those that are called to the supper of the Lamb. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. Amen. I don't think there's anything in the newsletter to draw your attention to, really. It's Sea Sunday uh, next weekend. Um, so we ask this weekend in particular to pray for those who work at sea. Uh, I think everything else is in the newsletter. Paul has finished his placement with us and now is on holiday. Um, and we also had uh, ordination in the diocese of Father Luke Wilkinson, who's been appointed to Hexham. Uh, after his ordination on Tuesday, so please keep him in your prayers as well. We have a new statue uh, of St. Francis of Assisi with the animals, so uh, I'm going to bless that statue now, and you can come and light candles. Lots of you, I know, have dogs and pets, so you can light a candle. It's represented by that dirty old Alsatian, which is next to him there uh, on the statue, so we bless the statue this morning. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let's go in the peace and joy of Christ. Thanks, everyone. Have a lovely Sunday. Thank you. Lovely to see you.